through coaching, but it's also in terms of education. Um, there's no point us lying out of our backs, waving our arms and legs around, going project reviews are, are, are no use because people don't understand the data. Well, what are we doing to generate a, let's call it an executive briefing session, because that always makes people feel good, doesn't it? It helps people understand what does a good schedule look like? What does good risk management uh, look like? There's plenty of ways out there that we can bring this to life. So that when people are turning the pages and they see um, uh, uh, FPI of uh, 0.75, it actually means something to them. So there's things we can do. Um, and sometimes, you know, we just have to take the brave pill ourselves. We need to stand up for what we believe in. Um, I consider, you no know, program management, project management, I think for shorthand purposes, whenever we say projects, can we just assume we mean all P3s, so all yep. of them? So we've got to be kind of evangelical without losing people, I think, um, in what we believe in. So I see project management as an integrating function. So there's no point me just cr crossing my arms and pointing at other people saying, you don't get it. What are you doing about changing? Then I think part of a functional role is to have a functional capability improvement plan. Now, we should have some view about how well we are doing as a function. <clears throat> we should have some view about what we aspire to and how we're going to get there. A, we could even manage it as a program if we wanted. So I think we can show some good practice, some good examples. And I would like to think I've done that in some of the places I've been. And, you know, the snowball effect then happens because other people look at that and it makes sense. And why wouldn't you do it? Before you know it, you have other functions doing the same. So even if line leadership kind of looks at you a bit strange and thinks you get in the way, you suddenly find um, there's some solidarity in numbers with other functions going, you know what, I agree. And then they start asking you about how they go about it. And they start employing, deploying some project management principles as well. There's a kind of a stealth attack on the organisation. And I think all too often we, we say it's all a bit too hard and it's somebody else's fault. When frankly, guys, you know, we're in a wonderful job. You know, we've got a wonderful role in an organisation. Uh, let's, let's be prepared to stand up and be counted and put our, our best foot forward on this. So I think sometimes it's all too easy to blame the organisation for not getting it when there's more we could do. Right, that's some really good points there. Um, and you're not going to get any, any debate on me on that part. I mean, education is something we've, we've spoken on previous pods, uh, Dale and I, because we wholeheartedly believe that, you know, when you talk about these... Um, particularly if you're kind of re-engaging an organization or, you know, you're, you're starting in a new organization and you're getting your feet up or you, you've got to get your head around the organization's strategy and the politics and all the other bits, but you've got to win the hearts and minds. And like you said, there is no leader without followers. And so, um, but you've got to create the situation in which there is a compelling vision. There is a, a you know, a way out of this despair and it's, and it's very easy. I think, um, particularly I find my, my time in UK, particularly easy to, um, you know, go down the rabbit hole of it's too hard or it's their fault, not our fault. Um, and, and you need to rise above it. You need to get strength in numbers um, and you need to make lasting change. And you, you can't do that unless you're involved um, or you've got some buy-in at that strategy level as well. Um, so maybe we could talk a bit about the, the high-level planning for this because you mentioned improvement plan. So where, where does this take place? Is this something that has to be sponsored at the top level down or you think you go bottom up or how does this kind of work in your mind or, or, or? My, my my view would be uh, neither it's middle out <laughs> middle out um, i like it so um there was a, a lady that was in charge of the hp compact merger mm -hmm. carly fiorina mm -hmm. and one of her expressions i think was um set the frame set the people free so what does she mean by that was well, an american accent but what she meant by that was you know Get the environment right. You know, take away all the stuff that gets in the way of things for people. So, you know, get the IT working. You know, make sure the bins are emptied. All that stuff. Give everybody the opportunity. You know, to deliver what they they believe because they're they're close the middle out. So the people are close enough to understand what the constraints are at top level, organisational level. But they're also close enough to understand what the day to day problems are. So you give people a framework to work within. So guys, we're going to come up with a strategy. Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be you know somewhat audacious, but it's got to be realizable. And you don't impose that. You know, it comes out of a discussion. Now, the real politic of the world we live in is that you may guide that discussion occasionally, but by and large, chances are they're going to come up with something that they believe in and is deliverable. 
Now, we've been lucky, though, to have got to you know, um, the positions we've got to because people have taken a chance in us. Mm. And it seems mm. quite curious that you know, the older yeah. we get, it seems to me the more conservative we get, the less of a chance we seem to be able to want to take with other people. So why don't we treat people with the same humility and generosity that people have uh, very kindly extended towards us? And I, I kind of can't get my head around that. Um, and there's the saying, isn't it? You know, surround yourself by people who are better than you. Um, and there's a few people in management positions I know have taken a very different approach to that. <laughs> but these, the, the, the point is, I mean, there's a huge difference. So, you know, if I think back to some of my sort of complex program management uh, roles I've had, there's a huge difference between me trying to convince a bunch of people, my leadership team are, for argument's sake, eight people. I'm 100% convinced on something, and they're only 50% convinced on it. Now, am I going to spend my effort there? Or am I going to let them come up with something that they, they are 90% convinced of amongst themselves and I'm 70% convinced of? Which is the better option? Go yeah. with the team. You know? This is adaptive yeah. leadership yeah. stuff. You know, these, these are the guys that know how to live this. And they're going to, we know this stuff. They're going to own it. They're going to have that emotional investment in it. So give them the framework. Give them the opportunity. Your job then is about getting the resources in place for them. There'll be some constraints on that. But, you know, you do what you can do and you go into battle with a HR department for training budgets. How do you win those battles? Well, you demonstrate some cause effect linkage between, no, this training is probably going to yield this benefit for the organisation. Because you know what? Most other functions don't have that argument. So get ahead of them. Um, there's various ways of doing that on behalf of your guys. Um, and sorry, I don't mean to be politically incorrect. By guys, I mean all sexes. Um, so, so, yeah, middle out, I'd say. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, you get that existential um, quandary, don't you, about what's the role of middle management? Well, that's the role of middle management. It's about knitting this stuff together. It's knitting together the aspirations of this uh, overpaid leader uh, and helping it uh, connect with the people on the shop floor who are telling you what the problems are on a day-to-day -day basis. You make that work, you know, and the world is yours, my son and, and lady and girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, this is great advice, uh, Paul. Particularly in the uh, kind of situation we're in at the moment, I mean, a lot of projects have stopped. They're looking to leaders to decisively take action um, and commit to a plan. Um, and and I think a lot of a lot of organisations have done that um, in a really mature way. Uh, which 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 brings me to a point around, um, you you know, you mentioned some things around improvement plans and getting the I guess the the people on board. Um, if you were managing an organization or a project now, um, what, would you, what would your advice be to whether it was C-suite or whether you were the C-suite? How would you have managed uh, the COVID-19 coming out of nowhere? Um, what would be your kind of an anticipation of right next steps? Yeah, so it touches on, I think, what we've just um, been talking about. I've just been talking about for the last few minutes. So you know, it's... Um, well, it's back to Dale's 12-step um, program, isn't it? Oh, you're out of the program now, Dale. I forget. I don't know where you are in your recovery. But um, He's drinking about, right now, isn't he? It's about, <laughs> knowing, it's about knowing the difference, isn't it, between what you can and what you can't control. Um, yeah. And, and I think there's a certain amount of – and I, I'm, I'm lucky, as, um, as Dale said, to live in a, you know, a Brookshire, which is a lovely county. It's a lovely village. And we've got some, uh, some good and interesting people around here. I know some of them in their business roles, they're basically doing what I've just sort of described in terms of lying on their back, waving their arms and legs in the air, uh, asking for the government to be very precise about what they can do and when. There's another guy I know who, whose name I won't mention, but he's been very successful. He's a, he's a surname you'd recognise. And uh, for one of his uh, five-star hotels, you know, he's taking the ball by the horns. He's helping people understand what the art and possible is, what the strategy is through it. So... Um, you know, it's difficult to be you know, too, too general or too specific in this type of conversation. And I don't want to sound like um, the daily briefing at five o'clock, which is data-free analysis by a large, to a large degree, by, by observation. But, you know, I think as a leadership team, you just sit there and say, well, what, what are the things we can control? You know, and there's going to be a spe spectrum of those. OK, this is what we can. This is what we can't. And one of the things they talk about change programs, and let's face it, as a uh, not as a nation, um, uh, internationally, we're going for a change program this time, aren't we? It's talking about communication. 